my name is Patrick Maloney. I'm a Catholic priest, uniquely of the, I'm the, the only Irishman in the Melchite Greek Catholic Church, which is an Eastern Catholic Church in union with the Church of Rome. And uh, I'm also by ritual, which means I can celebrate in either the Eastern or the Western Rite. That's who I currently am. I'm presently the director of a house here, is International House, and another group known as the Lazarus Community House of Hospitality. We are a small group of committed Christians who live a simple life. I am currently a pastor of a Eastern Catholic Church in Yonkers, known as the Church of Christ the Savior. Beyond retirement age and hoping to escape soon to continue the work here. So Thank that's you. who I currently am. Great. Um, tell me about uh, moving to America, and I'm going to ask you to jump right from that okay. to how you found yourself coming to the East Well, Village. I emigrated to the United States. Could you States. start again, because my word overlapped. Okay. I emigrated to the United States uh, in April of 1955. Happened to arrive here, actually, the Sunday after Easter. And uh, I came, actually, with the intention of studying for the priesthood, but on my own steam. I did not want to be railroaded in any direction. I was still uh, discerning what my vocation should be. Mostly, I was interested in a monastic community in Vermont, whom I'd met in Europe. Known, they were known as the Carthusians. Uh, I won't go into that in great detail, but I ended up uh, going to the seminary from New York to St. Mary's in Baltimore for my first year. Returned from there at the end of 55 and started working in Manhattan in 56. During that period, I enrolled at St. John's University in Brooklyn, uh, studying philosophy, some of the theology courses. And while there, I met street urchins. That's the only way of describing them. They were very similar to the type of kids that I'd seen in my hometown in the, in the, in the old country. It was a bit of a shock, because I certainly thought America was the land of milk and honey and the land of plenty. And I hadn't the faintest idea that any kind of poverty could have existed in America, and very specifically poverty more extreme than the poverty of my native city. There was a balanced poverty there. So I got interested in these kids. And in around the same time, I moved. I got an apartment for $11.50 a month in East 9th Street between Avenue C and B. And that particular experience changed my life. What happened really was I knew where I wanted to go and intended to pursue my, 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 my way. I had picked up a uh, beat up old car. And around the same time, I'd gotten myself a part-time job at an orphanage on Staten Island with the, uh, with the Sisters of, um, uh, of Mercy. So I needed to commute back and forth while also going to university. And one day I was opening the trunk of the car, and it was camping equipment and stuff, and nosy little toughies of the area, Hispanic, black, and so on, and saying, hey, hey, hey man, you was new to the neighborhood, hey man, and they were talking about the gringo and all that, you know. I was young, blonde, blue-eyed, and uh, looking at these guys, and, you know, at home with them. And they said, what's that stuff? I said, camping. What, what, are you going camping? I said, yeah, doesn't it look like that? But they said, could we go? I said, could you go? I said, I have my boys from Brooklyn. And immediately this little group came up and said, hey, no, man, you live in our block now. <laughs> so we, we should have first came. <laughs> so I asked the heavens at large, you know, what are you up to? So I picked my guys in Brooklyn, and I told these boys where we were camping. Would you believe they managed to go by bicycle to Staten Island? And so it began a street apostolate. Never planned, it was like out of the blue. And then I realized that meeting with kids in Low Manhattan, many of them illiterate, many of them all in the school system, not learning to read or write. And I tapped some of my uh, fellow students at the, at, the, um, at the St. John's University School of Education and said, hey, you're a reservoir of knowledge, but your water is stagnant because it's not going out to irrigate the land of the people that needs it. I've said I'm going to start the study center in Lower Manhattan. How about you guys give me an hour a week, a day a week, or whatever you can do? So we collectively got together with no plan in mind, just said that the Lord lead us, and we opened the storefront 
at 713 East 9th Street. I believe it was the end of 56 or early 57, if my memory serves me correctly. We remained on there, uh, became part of the neighborhood until we found this house. Where we had, in that interim period, we had found, we were given a loan of a piece of property in New Jersey. We set up a camp for the local kids back and forth. Our camp was destroyed by a mysterious fire the year after we got it. Some believed it was an act of racism. Ironically, that particular act plummeted us in the national headlines. New Jersey picked it up, New York picked it up. Every paper in New York City, the Times, the Post, the Mirror, World Telegraph and Sun, every one of them picked it up. And I was flabbergasted, what's going on here? They must be really looking for, desperate for news. So we, in, uh, that, was, that was in 1960, our house burned down. We found this house here in 1961. And we opened it up, as you mentioned, interestingly enough, Nativity Church. At the time, there was a place across the road from Nativity is on uh, Forsyth Street, and the other side of that street, had, it was a mission, was called uh, Christie. And on Christie was the Catholic Worker House founded by Dorothy Day of the Catholic Worker, whom I'd met that year. And they were doing, providing education work. But many kids were in overcrowded homes, couldn't study. So we then took over this building with a wing and a prayer, as it were, small down payment. We all chipped in together to pay the first mortgages. And we began to house displaced young people or people from overcrowded homes. So I've been here since then. I know where here is, but could you here, say where here, here is? This house currently is 606 East 9th Street, and this being the first foundation of a group that began to be known as the Bonitas Youth Services. Bonitas Polish, you know, is a Latin word. It may not like to be mixed up with bonita, which is beautiful. Bonitas is the Latin word, which means goodness. Our motto was to say, well, seek the goodness in everybody, in the rough-looking kid, the tough-looking kid, the disheveled kid. The face of God is in him, irrespective of what he looks like or who he is. There's a, there's a spark there to be cultivated. A spark, really, should I say, to be ignited. So we got very much involved in the community. And then, so we were there all down through the, the early days of quite extreme poverty. Can you tell me about the transition yeah. from when you first arrived to the more extreme poverty in this Well, area? you see, ironically, Paul, when I first arrived, I was doing very well. I did work as an as a, as a unregistered qual, um, practical nurse. I took on some courses. I worked off of Park Avenue. I had a home. Um, I had a rented place that I got as a result of somebody going on vacation and needed a home minder. So I lived in Park Avenue for a while. Then I moved there, there to a fashionable off the park, 72nd. And it was there too I learned lessons. I was going in one day with a bunch of my young lads, my little musketeers from the neighborhood, and I was told they're like that their type wasn't allowed in the building. So I became highly indignant. It was the same kind of a building that even the tenants weren't allowed in without their evening gloves. So I learned firsthand about the discrimination that existed in a very subtle way. And then I felt I didn't want to be up there, trapped in a ghetto, in a white, a rich, or Irish ghetto. Mm -hmm. And Lower East Side was the most kaleidoscopic neighborhood, if not in the city, in the world. You had poor Poles, Russians, Germans, French, Irish, Italians. In this particular block in which we are now, between Avenue C and B at 606 East 9th Street, when I arrived, there was not, as, not one Hispanic or black. Between here, the closest uh, Hispanic or, or other person you got would be the very last row of houses close to Avenue D on 9th Street. All around, all Avenue C at the time were the Jewish stores, Eastern European, wonderful merchants with their, you know, their green groceries, whatever they had, Avenue B, had Polish bakeries, haberdashery stores, everything you could imagine. It was like an Eastern European village. Mm 